So why would your systolic pressure be higher than your diastolic? Well, there's a condition for that called isolated systolic hypertension. Normally, the blood pressure is 120 over 80. That top number is the systolic, which is the measurement of the contraction of the heart, and the diastolic, which is the relaxation phase. So this condition is defined as the top number, systolic, going above 130, but sometimes you see it actually really high, like 160 or 180. This is the most common type of hypertension over the age of 65 reported by the Mayo Clinic. But the question is, what causes this? Well, if you do Google researches, you'll see that it could be anemia, hyperthyroid, diabetes, but you won't find high cortisol unless you dig into other references, like this book right here, which is the SIBA Collection of Medical Illustrations, Volume 4, Endocrine System, page 86. And this is under the section of a condition where you have high cortisol. I'm gonna read this to you. Cortisol may be responsible for the moderate hypertension, which is characteristically more of the systolic type first, gradually becoming diastolic. Now, this information is very difficult to find if you just do a general search on high systolic blood pressure. But if you type in high cortisol and blood pressure, then you get a lot more information. But, but you have to know the link between the two before you even knew to research it. So what's up with this high cortisol? Well, first of all, it causes significant sodium retention, and it also creates significant potassium suppression. Anytime you suppress potassium, you can start getting high blood pressure just from that alone. And it can also affect the sympathetic nervous system, which is part of the nervous system that controls this. This is sympathetic, this is parasympathetic. That's another potential relationship there but also high cortisol will cause suppression of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a natural thing that our cells produce as a vasodilator to relax the blood vessels, to reduce blood pressure. Yeah, so cortisol suppresses that. Now, in addition to that, you can also consume certain foods that are high in nitric oxide, like beets, garlic, meat, and dark leafy green vegetables. So here are a few things you can try. Start taking more vitamin D, and I'm talking about at least 20,000 IUs of vitamin D. Of course, when you take that much, you also wanna take 200 micrograms of vitamin K2. You always wanna take those together, but here's the thing. Vitamin D is one of the most magical things to reduce blood pressure. And the relationship between vitamin D and high cortisol is this. Anytime you see people with high cortisol, you usually always see them with a vitamin D deficiency. And when you actually take vitamin D, you can actually help to lower cortisol. So that is the relationship there. And I think the reason for that is that vitamin D is not really a vitamin. It's a hormone that acts like cortisol in the body to, to a certain extent. It gets rid of inflammation, it's really helpful in autoimmune conditions, but it's definitely helpful in hypertension. The other thing that I would recommend is start taking potassium and start consuming more leafy greens to get more potassium and nitric oxide. I think that alone might greatly help you. All right, go ahead and try it and put your comments down below. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications.